All right, hey guys, Justin here, back at the head end of our plumbing system. Now, I hope you like talking about sewage as much as I do, because that's what today's episode's all about. Specifically, our drainage pipes. You may remember a couple episodes ago, Sharon was describing a little bit about the system, how we had initially dug the holes to get underneath the footings. So we're now, last uh, evening, we were kind of working late into the night to get it done, get everything glued up, let the pipe have a chance to set before we do our water test today. So, before we do the test, I'll describe a little bit about the system for you. Now that it's complete, you can see, again, we've got our main 3-inch line that drains all the way across the building with the individual stub outs that kind of tee into it. So we'll go and show you each stub out eventually, but for now, that's the main building drain going through. It stubs out on this side of the footing, so we can attach a clean out here in the future. If you got to get in there and clean it out because something got plugged up. Now you may have a couple questions, what is going on with all these pipes here in this section? So first of all, there's this one, which is um, going to be a floor drain later. So you can see it's going to have this trap underneath the slab. We'll later come back and cut it level with the floor because this is going to be a little mechanical room. Water heaters, things like that uh, need to have somewhere to drain if they overpressure. So we got to have a drainage in that room. Now, this one, you may be noticing, hey, how come that one's a little bit crooked? Well, I don't know. It has to have this drainage slope in the T sweep here. So by the time you do that, it has to naturally have some degree of tip in it. I don't know a better way to do it. If you're a plumber, leave me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, we'll cut this. No one will ever know. It'll be our little secret. Okay, what is going on with this pipe is probably your next question. Why is it so tall? Where is it going? Well, it stands up about 10 feet. The reason is because we're gonna use it today for our static water pressure test. Um, in the future, it can become our vent. So the way this uh, water test is gonna work, basically this pipe isn't meant to hold pressure. It's all drainage and venting. But the way you test it apparently is you fill it up with a little bit of water. And if you put 10 feet of static pressure on it, 10 feet of head of water pressure is about four PSI. So that just kind of puts a little bit of pressure to kind of check all the fittings, make sure they don't leak. That's what we're going to be doing today. So that's floor drain. I think we already mentioned this one is the fresh water coming in. This one's going to be the vent pipe. This one is for our gray water drain. The washer can actually drain to the landscape so you can reuse the water. Um, but you need to have a, an alternate. So there'll be a P-trap on here, we can drain it through the septic system. There'll be a P-trap on here, we can drain it out the other way to the landscape. So that'll be later our water, our washer machine can get hooked up to this one. Okay, that covers this end of it. Let's jump over here. You can see this one is the shower. So in the future, being here, taking a shower, it's gonna be super awesome. Uh, we got our P-trap, it's gonna be below the slab. This one comes up here. Now, you may be wondering, hey, where's the vent for this shower? This one is going to be wet vented. So the vent line for it will share the drain line for the washer and the floor drain. Um, it's uh, somewhat difficult, I guess, to figure out how and when you can wet vent. We kind of did a bunch of research on it, calculated our fixture drainage units, and uh, watched some videos from a friendly Canadian, and we feel good about this one being wet vented. So that's the shower. Hop over here. This is going to be for the toilet. So there's going to be a little water closet here. You're doing your business. You got your three inch stub out. That's what the toilet will connect to. And it's going to have its own dedicated vent that's going to connect to that vent line up through the attic later. Okay, coming back over here. This one stubbed up is the vanity. It was close enough in the vanity cabinet that we can just tee this one up. We don't have to make a sideways run. We're going to be using an air admittance valve to vent this one. In the future, someday when we're working inside instead of in the dirt, we'll show you how that one works. Okay, the last one coming down here, our main drain line, quarter inch slope all the way down. It's gonna exit through this side of the footing. Before it does, it's gonna pick up this final drain from the kitchen sink. So this one's stepped up here for the kitchen sink, also gonna be using the air admittance valve on that one. Everything joins together, goes out that way towards the septic tank through this end of the footing. Okay, that is how the whole system works. Now we're going to be doing the test with the water. So we've removed our little caps for now so the air can escape as we're filling it up with water. Once the water is maybe up to about here, we'll cap them 
and then we'll keep filling it all the way to the top of that 10 foot pipe. And as long as there's no leaks at any of the joints, we know we're good. Okay, let's get to it. Let her rip, tater chip! All right, guys, water's going in. I don't really know how long it's gonna take. I suspect a couple minutes. It's a lot of volume of pipe to fill. But we got the water going in to our shower drain. So we'll just wait. All right, let's get a little closer in action. Sounds like things are filling up. Okay, shut it off. Oh, let's see. Got some standing water in all of them now. So it's looking like it's pretty full. Right where we wanted it. Should have gotten most of the air out. Take a look over here. Got some standing water in all our pipes. So that's cool. So at this point, double check down here. Don't see anything leaking past our rubber cap. So that's good. Got some water in here. No leaks so far. So at this point, I think we're good to cap it and add water up our 10 foot pipe. So it's got a little pressure. All right, here we go with our 10 foot static pressure test. We're just gonna fill it up until the water starts coming out, I guess, and then we'll shut it off. Okay, go ahead. Off. All right, well now we've got our 10 feet of water in there. So far, so good. It's a little difficult to tell if we got some leaks at this point because there was some splashing happening here when we filled up this one. But it uh, looks pretty good. No obvious leaks so far. This area is pretty wet. I suppose we'll just let things dry out for a day or so and just leave it under its static pressure test. Get all the water dried off on top of the pipes. Come back and look for any wet spots. Make sure we're good before we go burying things. But right now, I would say we're looking pretty good. All right, so We've now had our water on test for about the last three hours. You can see we've got a little bit of bulge from our test caps, so we know we got some pressure. Uh, but so far, so good. If you come over here, you can see no leaks anywhere. We kind of dried off the pipes with a towel so that we would know if anything was leaking. But so far, everything looks like it's real good. So we'll leave the water in the uh, pipe here. I think the inspector may want to see it that way. I'm not sure. We'll leave it for good measure. Nothing wrong with that. So now, next thing is, as far as pipe work goes, we have to backfill all of this. We've got to put some uh, wrap around it to protect it from uh, the concrete so it doesn't get crushed when the concrete expands and contracts. So we'll come back to that in another episode once we're working on that. But that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.